Did you know that they can't charge you more on your insurance for your race, religion, or national origin? Also, one of the things you probably didn't know, that's just not being a racist. <laughs> that's pretty much every state. But the thing that's unique is they also can't charge you for your uh, sexual orientation. So if you're male or female, that doesn't play a factor in the insurance. If you guys want to get the best prices on your insurance in Pennsylvania, I'm going to go through those tips and explain the benefits and what you need to know to make sure you have the right coverage and the right prices mixed together. Let's start off with the first piece, which is what the state requires. So the state of Pennsylvania does require that you carry bodily injury of 15,000 per person, 30,000 per accident, and then property damage of 5,000. They also require that you have medical payments or first party medical benefits of at least 5,000 or higher. There's three parts to insurance. I'm not gonna go in depth with that. I actually made another video if you wanna learn that piece. But the first part is for other people. That's what the state is requiring. Bodily injury, if you hurt someone else in a car accident, it's 15,000 each person up to 30,000 each accident. So if there's multiple people in the car, each of them gets that amount up to the max. Property damage is extremely low in Pennsylvania, the minimum anyways, it's 5,000. So if you hit a car, your insurance has to have at least 5,000 damage coverage to repair that vehicle. Keep in mind, most cars are worth more than $5,000. So if you go with the state minimums, you're putting yourself at a pretty high risk. The last piece is the medical payment. So if you get injured in your car, this is the second piece of insurance, which covers people in your vehicle, that's 5,000 per person of medical. There's a couple ways to remove that and put in place better options. The first part you're gonna hear is the uh, first party medical benefits. That is a couple different pieces. So it's medical, so you can do 5,000, 10,000, 20,000, you know, it goes up in increments. I think the most you can do is 100,000. There's funeral expenses and that's gonna be up to $2,500. That's the most you can claim for funeral expense. If someone dies and it pays your family for those uh, small expenses, that's not enough, so I'll go over why uh, you'll actually have an option for more in a second. You also have death benefits, and that's kind of where that comes in. So you can have as much as, as much, you can have as much as 25,000 for death benefits. And that's what we call first party medical benefits. Whenever you take away the med pay, you're replacing it with the first party medical. There's another piece to that. So this is why the state of Pennsylvania gets a little bit confusing and hopefully I'm making sense. But there's a third piece to that called the first party medical benefits combined. What that is, is you can choose, there's four levels. Now keep in mind, even though there's four levels that the state has created, not all insurance companies are gonna offer all four of them. So the four levels that you're gonna see is gonna be level one. It's $50,000, that's your combined aggregate total. Your medical will max out at that 50,000 mark. Now you'll see a slash 2.5, or that stands for 2,500, that's your funeral expenses, and then slash 10,000, and that's the 10,000 towards death benefits. That's the lowest option. The next one is going to be just the next level up. It's 50,000, 2,500. That's the most you can have, and that's all the same with all these. There's going to be another 10,000 for death benefits. The third level is 177.5, so it's 177,500. Somebody please tell me why that is that way. I don't understand, don't get it, but it's the way they do it. It's 2,500 for funeral. It also switches now to 25,000 for your, your death benefits. The last coverage is 277,500. <laughs> That stupid number. And then 2,500 for funeral expenses and 25,000 for death benefits. So that's the first party medical benefits combined. So you can have kind of a package pre-built. In my personal opinion, I like the middle one. So if you're looking at good, better, best, the 177,500, uh, that's gonna be the most common one that people pick, mainly because the price difference isn't very high. So to go from the lower one to the higher one is maybe gonna cost you, we'll just say $50 in this example. I was running some tests today with a current customer that we were quoting, and I think the total between the lowest and the highest coverage was $100 a year. 
And to have that much more medical is such a small difference when you look at if you actually have to file this claim. There's actually kind of a third piece of this whole thing. So we've got the bodily injury, other people you hurt. We've removed the medical out of it because we're going to do the first party medical benefits and we're going to do the combined one in our situation. So we're going to have that 177,500. That's what our default is with the company I work for. We're going to do that as the standard. Now you also have a third option. You can add extraordinary or extraordinary medical benefits. And on paper, some companies list them as excess medical benefits, EMB. That is typically, you can go all the way up to an additional million point one. So in most paperwork, it's gonna show a million because you'll probably have 100,000 in medical plus the million. You can do lower levels. So you can do 500,000, 300,000, 100,000. Not all companies offer the extra. You'll see some companies only give you a thousand. Since we quote multiple companies, I've been fortunate enough to see that difference between different companies. And then typically most people aren't gonna go that high. Who's gonna use the million? It's gonna be your doctors and your lawyers and all that, all those people that are looking for that extra coverage. They want it built into their auto insurance. The people that have their own medical, so if they have medical outside of Pennsylvania, they're typically gonna do more of a middle package or a lower package. There's not really a point to remove it all together. One, because you can't, you have to have at least 5,000. But two, because it's not expensive. You might as well have the extra coverage, not just for you, but for other people in your car. So if you get pretty hurt in an accident, you want to make sure your friends and your family and, and you as well has the right coverage. Can you exclude parts of that? Yes, but it's not typically worth it cost wise. The other piece of Pennsylvania that makes it a little bit unique is their tort. It's called limited tort and full tort. There's only two of them. You have the option of picking one or the other. Now the price difference is huge. Full tort is about 500 to 600, sometimes more per year extra. I'm gonna tell you out of all the policies I've sold, and I've probably sold a few hundred in Pennsylvania, is 90, probably 98, 99% of the people choose limited tort. The reason most people are picking the limited tort is one, it's way cheaper. It's gonna save you a lot of money. But two, there's certain situations you can utilize it. So what's the difference between the two? Full tort is your ability to sue. You can sue for pain and suffering no matter what happens. If you think you can sue them, you can. Will you win? Most of the time not, but you have that option. So typically your lawyers are gonna be the one that purchase that because they want the ability, they want the full rights to sue somebody. Your limited tort limits or removes your right to sue for pain and suffering. So if you're injured in an accident and you have small pain and suffering, maybe it's mental anguish, you can't go after them for that. You're pretty much stuck. You've opted out of that ability to sue somebody. So there are situations where you can use this. I've always used the example, you ran over my foot. If I bought limited tort, you ran over my foot and it was a little sore for two days, maybe a week, uh, I can't sue you. That's it. I wasn't injured enough. I can't prove it. There's nothing major that affected my life same exact situation you run over my foot except this time you cut my toe off goodly frickin a <laughs> where's my toe <laughs> so you cut my toe off i get it put back on but now i can't stand for a half hour more than a half hour at a time i can't work in my typical job i have majorly been affected even though i have limited tort i can still sue you because i one can prove that i've had a major sustained loss or a major piece of my life has changed. And two, it's a physical injury. I've got something that physically happened to me. So now I can go after that pain and suffering. Full tort, the opposite. It doesn't matter if I got hurt, if I'm mental anguish, whatever it is, I can sue you for that, that specific reason. Will I win? Probably not. Let me know in the comments below, guys. Have you ever had a situation where you used the limit or the full tort or have you ever had a situation where you thought you could use it and it wasn't beneficial? So let's start a conversation below and give advice on what you found to be the best option for your tort. The other piece that we wanna go over is they also offer something called stacked and unstacked uninsured motorist and underinsured motorist. What is uninsured motorist? It's when people have no insurance. Underinsured means they have lower than what you carry. So you're gonna cover the difference. 
Well, stacked and non-stacked is an option. Most people pick non-stacked just because they're gonna do, if you're gonna do the higher limit, so if you're gonna do a 100, 300 coverage or a 250, 500 coverage, that's how much you're covering someone else you hurt, you're going to have uninsured motorists to match that amount. So if you get hit and that person has no insurance, you're gonna have the 100,000 per person 300,000 per accident or higher, right? The, the typical is 250 and 500. If they hit you, they have state minimums, the 1530, and you have the higher limits, the 250, 500, well, you've, gonna, you've got a huge gap of what they cover to what your insurance covers. So your insurance is gonna pick up all the rest of it up to that limit that you've set. What you can do is something called stacked. So if you have lower limits, and you can do them at higher limits, but let's just say you have the 1530 and someone hits you that has no insurance. So you've got 1530 for you, but that's not enough, right? So if you have a second vehicle, you can stack that coverage on top of itself. What that does is that gives you 30, 60. So it pretty much doubles your coverage. If you have a third vehicle, you can stack that on top of it by choosing stacked uninsured motorist or underinsured if they have lower limits than you and you're carrying 50 and 100, 50,000 a person, 100,000 per accident for uninsured or underinsured motorist. They hit me, they have state minimums, so there's a gap there. Now mine will stack on top of it, give me more coverage. That way if I'm choosing lower limits, I can at least kind of play with having enough coverage for people in my car without having to go completely out of pocket paying for the policy. Is it worth it to choose one or the other? Honestly, it's only about three to $5 a month in most cases that I've seen to add stacked versus non-stacked. So it's pretty easy call in my book. I think I would default to stack just because of the cost. If you're trying to knock off pieces of a policy to get it cheap, you might have to do non-stacked and you might have to do uh, the lower medicals and the lower stuff in those situations you gotta be able to afford it, right? So that's an option for you. The last two things I wanted to cover are two unique pieces about your state. The state of Pennsylvania is has a law where if you get a DUI, the insurance can drop you. So when you renew that policy, and, and I believe it's actually in between the policy, you can get lost. I mean, they can just say, nope, too high of a risk, goodbye, you made the choice to drink and drive, you're out of our company. It's fairly rare, and a couple states do do that as well, but that's a major thing to keep in mind. The second piece is kind of a fix to that. So if you're married and the situation is where it happens, right? Spouse gets a DUI, you have the option to exclude your spouse. You're typically gonna exclude them anyways because they're gonna lose their license, they're not gonna be able to drive for a while, so you're gonna wanna remove them from the policy anyways. Honestly, once you unexclude them, you're probably gonna have to shop around because typically those rates tend to skyrocket, especially with the company that you're with today. The third piece of that kind of a subcategory to give you one extra uh, little, little piece of info to chew on is you can also exclude children in the house. We call them boomerang kids. That's the, that's the internet term is kids move out, they go off, they come back, and you don't want them on your policy. They have their own insurance, they have their own car, they're still living their own life, but you wanna exclude them, that's also an option. Now you are gonna have a little bit of kickback, not every company is gonna give you the best rate for that, because even though you do exclude drivers, some companies still rate for them being in the house. If they still have a ticket or two, that's gonna affect your insurance at some point. Most of them don't, so you'll have to kind of pick and choose which company is best for you. Anyways, guys, I hope this was helpful. Uh, don't forget to leave a comment below if you have any questions. I am also gonna link a website uh, of mine that you can fill out a quote for if you're interested in. So I actually work for a company that quotes multiple states, uh, 20 states actually. If you want good advice from somebody and you wanna try to get a good quote without making five, six, seven phone calls, I'll put that link in the description below. Otherwise, smash the like button and share this with anyone that